Hello, um, I'm Sarah Ames. I'm Digital Scholarship Librarian at the National Library of Scotland. Um, I'm just following up on a few questions from the AI for Lamb talk um, the other day. So I'm just going to go through a couple of the questions um, and give some answers where I can too. So I'll, I'll read them out first. So the first one is um, knowing now that the way that you catalog, prepare, digitize, etc. affects what researchers or artists and so on can do with the data. Have you or are you planning to make any changes to the way that you do these things? Um, so the answer to that is yes, we've already made some changes to this. Um, so one area, for example, is um, that we started to produce additional file formats from our digitization program. And we weren't producing Alto XML um, as standard from digitization. And we found that it was, it was particularly useful for some research projects. And we wanted to um, comply with international standards around um, file formats and digitization. So we decided to go with Alto. Um, so now we produce that from our digitization um, internally. And I guess if we were going to um, partner with externals um, for digitization as well, we'd probably want to negotiate that as well so that we, we have standard um, data set formats. Um, we've also done work around, um, I guess, the reasoning behind how and why we digitize. This is a bit more tricky. So um, we wanted to communicate to our users a lot about um, why we've made certain decisions, because, because that's really important stuff to keep with the data sets and to keep with, with our material. Um, so we um, compile information about, um, as standard now, about um, why something was decided to be digitized above other things, for example, what funded it, who funded it, um, and why, when it was done, was it outsourced, was it done internally, and were there any particular challenges around the digitization, was it an unusual format, for example, did it need different equipment to, to usual, um, and so on. Um, and there's no, no metadata field that you can put that information into, unfortunately, so we've kind of botched it a bit. We put um, this is a free text field into a, an other field, into a, into a mods other field, and, and put that into our METS files. Um, and that's just, just how we're doing it for the time being. We're looking at, at better ways of doing that going forwards. But at the moment, just to keep that information um, and to keep it in a fairly standard way and consistent way with our data is really important. Um, so that's that's probably one of the, the bigger things that we're doing. And for older data sets, I've been going back and trying to piece together pieces of the picture and, and speaking to curators and, and others about why things were done in that way and why it was chosen and what funded it and who did, who did what. Um, so it's actually been a really interesting part of the process to, to put together why things are happening in libraries, to be honest. So those are probably the main things I can think of at the moment for that. Um, the second question is um, about the AI framework um, that we're, we're hoping to, to start soon in the library. Um, it says, I believe you said it was a work in progress. Can you share any further information on that progress and will interested library colleagues be able to see that framework? Um, yes, you'll be able to see it. Anything we do will be made available, openly licensed on our data foundry. Um, haven't started it yet though. So we're currently recruiting an intern post around it. Um, it'll just be a short term internship, maybe a couple of months to um, to kick off the work, I think. I, I'd anticipate that this work isn't going to be done in, in two months. It needs such, um, it needs wide consultation across the library and with some externals too. It needs um, research into the current state of the field and, and the work that's already happened um, around AI for libraries. So um, we um, we anticipate that it'll, it'll be a bit longer than a couple of months um, and, and to get a sign off as well and the library will take some time, but I'm happy to provide, provide updates on that um, as and when we, we get started. I'm quite, quite keen for that work to get going soon. Um, and then the third question is, there's a question about whether you have used any AI tools with audio collections, especially if you've done anything with audio collections in languages other than English. I'm afraid a very quick answer to that is no, we haven't yet. Uh, we do have um, Scotland's um, National Moving Image Archive and, and sound collections. So we've got huge sound collections. We've got a big project around sound. Um, and audio collections. So I'd anticipate that this would be one area that we're going to be particularly interested in. And when we have, when we write up our AI framework and when we point towards next steps, I'm sure that sound collections um, will be in that um, and, and the possibilities around that. But we haven't yet experimented in that area. So if anybody has already, then definitely keen to make connections there and, and to learn from people. I think that's everything. So thanks very much for the questions and have a great day. See you soon. Bye.